I don't like it so much when the people, the actors, are just a tool to carry out the plot of a story. I like it when the people are the story. A movie can have the worst effects, worst set designs, and worst costume designs possible, and it can still be a brilliant movie if the parts people play are believable characters, especially if they're over the top and still believable. And then, of course, sometimes a movie is so incredibly corny and cheesy that it's enjoyable to watch. I was watching someone give an hour-long review of The Force Awakens. I think I watched about 40 minutes of it total. It was called, The Force Awakens is the Worst Movie of All Time. In this review, he shows how much different of values he finds important in a movie than I do. Or more accurately, people that are like me. It's not like he addressed this video specifically to me. To me, he neglects the importance of strong characters. And I obviously don't mean physical strength, I'm meaning, do you remember the characters? What role, emotionally, in contrast to the other characters, did that character fill? If they're just a plot device, it doesn't matter to me how realistically they fit as a plot device. I don't even actually care that much how realistically the plot even comes together. What I care about is what kind of emotional and mental ride I went on from watching the movie and learning who the people are in the movie and the way that they banter or communicate with the other characters. Not necessarily their pasts, though that can be helpful too, but learning who they are now and what kind of personality type and just generally what is the character of their person. What is it that makes them them? Hey, and if a movie can actually kind of mess with your mind, that's even better. Like Inception. Mr. Repsion had invited a bunch of people to go watch Star Wars Rogue One over in Auburn, I think it's at a theater by the Supermall. And I had thought about going, but I eventually just canceled because I just have no interest in that movie. From all the reviews I've been seeing of Rogue One, it's a movie you'll like if you're into movies that are primarily about action sequences. Supposedly, it's one of the best movies when it comes to action sequences, and I guess there are some really dark and gory scenes. Because all of the stuff I love about Star Wars, the giant sets and the crazy looking technology and the crazy looking machines and the crazy looking battles and the the incredible intense battles and stuff like that, that's 98% of this movie. It just starts and hits the ground run and it just does not stop right up to the end. Super Saiyan. And it is one of the best things I've ever seen. Dude literally pushes the guy up against the ceiling and cuts him half while he's on the ceiling. What? I cannot believe They did that in a Star Wars movie. That is the darkest, cruelest, craziest. It's everything I ever wanted. Hey, you know, if that's your thing, great. It's certainly not mine. If I want to watch a fighting kind of scene, I'll watch UFC or boxing or something that isn't choreographed. I'll watch videos of real fights breaking out. I'll watch police chase footage. But watching a choreographed scene of some sort of reenactment of some sort of epic battle in some over-the-top world isn't my idea of a good time. If it's a reenactment, I'd rather watch everything that happens right before and right after a battle. I mean, imagine a two-hour movie where at least an hour and 20 minutes of it were slow reenactments and camera angles of a single crippling car accident and the director would try to impress you by moving the camera along one of the style lines of the vehicle and showing in ultra-slow motion exactly the damage that occurred on impact, and sound effects that are all echoey and really take advantage of the type of seven or more channel surround sound that theaters have. The bending metal, the flaking paint, the way the window turned into splinters and shards of glass in an almost wave-like pattern during movement and then showing flashbacks to when the windshield was made, and the work that was required to make it, and flashbacks of the people's lives who made the windshield, and little clips of the -the over-the-top office party to celebrate some sort of financial milestone for the glass company, where they were having a good time getting drunk at work, and someone had to go to the hospital because they slipped on the floor because of a leaky roof. And then there'd be all this positive talk about the company that made the car, maybe some virtue signaling about American values and how great capitalism is, and so on and so forth, without ever saying it directly. Would you find that to be an enjoyable movie for the sake of the plot, and the acting, and or the script? I wouldn't. I doubt many people would. Now, if the visual effects were impressive enough, I might end up watching it purely for the visuals without a care about the plot, and the acting, and the script. Yet, many people seem to want the epic action and fight sequences to comprise the majority of a movie. I don't really understand it. To me, the action and fight sequences are tools used to further the plot of a movie. 
Others feel that those things are what make a movie great and that the people, the actors, are the tools used to further the plot of a movie. And then there's obviously people who think anything in between. I'm the person who preferred the movie Alien over Aliens. Alien being a psychological thriller and Aliens being an action movie. So Star Wars Rogue One looks like it's going to be everything I don't really care about in a movie. And then there's the soundtrack that I've been able to hear. It sounds like the soundtrack to 300 Rise of an Empire strikes back with great vengeance and furious anger those who would attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. Where's Willis?